Okay, today we're going to review this device here. It's called the Media Center. The name brand on this, I actually picked this up from GameStop as you can see here for $25. It's labeled the Xbox One Icon Media Center. And in fact, online Icon Media Center seems to be how this device is sold in Canada. But it's hard to find it anywhere else other than at GameStop. Uh, the reason I picked this up was, uh, and if you've already seen my other video, I had one of these, uh, Collective Minds USB Hub, and I was really happy with this. This will run you about 30 to $40 online, uh, but as far as I know, you can't pick this up in a store anywhere. So I thought it would be interesting to pick this up because uh, most GameStops will carry this. They seem to be phasing it out, which is why it's a reduced price because this is designed to fit on the original Xbox One and not the Xbox One S. Although with a USB 3.0 extension cable, you can actually hook it up to just about anything, including the Xbox One S. But uh, I already, you've already seen, if you see my other video about the Collective Minds Hub, you'll see that packaging there. Uh, so I'll basically take this apart so you can see this and compare the two. Um, there's not, it's, it's kind of interesting the name on this. Like I said, uh, on here it says Icon Media Center. On the back it says it's made by a company called Established Brands. And I won't get into it, but uh, basically there's been, there's a few companies that merged, including Established Brands, to another company. But the name, I guess, doesn't matter too much. But this is pretty generic. Um, the other way you can purchase something similar to this is on eBay. Uh, there's a bunch being sold from uh, Chinese eBay sellers and the device looks almost completely identical to this except that instead of an SD card slot it has three USB ports like the Collective Minds Hub so it's uh, it could be a completely different product and manufacturer and all that but design wise it looks very similar to this as opposed to the Collective Minds Hub and I'll show the two side by side here the other thing I thought that was interesting about this is that, uh, well, I don't know if I showed everything here, but there's not too much to look at. It's, it's, a, it's a nice enough box. Uh, it has French language on here. On the box itself, it's kind of interesting. It says, you know, you, you can use a, a two and a half inch hard drive up to two terabytes, which I thought was kind of interesting. I'll, I'll cover that in a little bit. Um, two USB 3.0 ports, an LED light to indicate power status, an SD card reader um, on the back there, and they show an image that doesn't even look like a real the real device it's kind of illuminated kind of odd anyways enough about the box so let's see so comparatively speaking with the collective minds box this is definitely much more this isn't as nice but it's definitely more retail-y right everything's in plastic and the box is uh just kind of open from the side sort of thing but Anyways, there you go. Uh, like the other device, I've already opened this and taken it apart, and I, I've actually had originally filmed this video about a week ago, and I ran into a number of issues, and I unfairly blamed it on this device. Um, the, the cable I just pulled out of here it doesn't actually come with this device, and I'll get into that in a moment too. This So basically what you get is this here. There's a, a limited warranty card and a, uh, an instruction manual about how to basically put a hard drive and attach it to your Xbox One. Uh, the Collective Minds Hub did a much better job of showing you how to install the drive, but also format it so the Xbox One will see it correctly, which uh, is kind of interesting. More or less, before you put the hard drive on the Xbox One, you'll just want to format the hard drive as an NTFS drive. There's a... Uh, two bits of plastic here on its cover and some more molded plastic I mean it's uh there's nothing fancy about the packaging and if you're like me you're just gonna toss this thing anyway so it doesn't really matter how nice the box is that said the Collective Minds box is uh, definitely nicer I'll show you I actually have two of these because I had so much trouble with it I wasn't sure if it was the device or something else uh, but you can see the uh, the Collective Minds hub box is longer um, it's not, it's not uh, wider. 
or depth depth wise it's about the same you can see here um, but it's longer and it's taller the heights more anyways not that matters too much the devices themselves are similar in size you know it's designed of course to fit on the side of the xbox one so the height and the width shouldn't differ but in the case of these two here the depth is the biggest difference and the main reason for that is this sd card slot that this device comes with you can see it goes pretty much the width of the uh, the unit here now, I originally bought this because of the price. You know, GameStop is selling them for $25, and you can pick them up in store as compared to the Collective Minds Hub, which you can't get in the store, and it costs over $30. So I think with, with shipping and tax, I paid about $35, so between $30 to $40, but I paid $35 personally for this. And this I paid $25. With tax, it was about $26. So there's about a $10 difference here between the two. And you could pick this up same day as long as your GameStop carries it, whereas this, you'd have to wait for shipping. Anyways, with the extra width here, I had thought that I might be able to finally take advantage. I've shown this a couple times, and I mentioned this in the Collective Minds video. I have this 4 terabyte drive that uh, is 15 millimeter drive, and the Collective Minds hub, you can only put a 12 millimeter drive in it, so this is too big. Whereas this device, since it's wider, actually, now, <laughs> again, I already got a hard drive in here, and I'll talk about that in a little bit as well. And this is a two terabyte drive. Uh, on the box, as I mentioned, it says it supports two terabyte, and apparently there's a reason for that. So the way this is designed, the connector here for the, uh, for the SATA drive, this is the uh, Collective Minds Hub. You can see the, the SATA connector there sticks out so even though it's too it's not tall enough or wide enough for a four terabyte drive it's restricted by this unlike this particular device where if we take a look here on the edge the two terabyte drive the connector comes out so even though this is the height is wider than the connector the connector comes out a little bit Whereas on this four terabyte drive, the connector is flush with the drive. So when we look at this guy here, I don't know if you can make that out here, the connector, the SATA connector is blocked by this piece of plastic here on top. So you won't be able to fit the drive in without using some sort of extender. Or as I said, I have more than one of these things on this other one here. I had cut out the plastic, so you can see the comparison there. I'd cut out the plastic so that where this is inhibited, uh, this one is, this unit is not. Oops. Oh, this thing's, this little arm thing's kind of pain. Um, see, that'll fit now because we cut out the plastic. I'll, I'll show that a little bit greater detail in just a little bit. Now, on the front of this device, there's two LEDs. There's an LED for power uh, here on the sync button. And there's a second LED that, uh, that's dedicated to the SSD. So when you have an SSD uh, plugged into this device, the light will come on and show when you're reading the SSD. On the Xbox One, there's a media, uh, a media app, I think it's called. Media Viewer, I believe it's called, on the Xbox One. That allows you, if you put the SD card in here, you can view photographs, uh, photos, and video. I don't use my Xbox One as a media player. I just use it strictly for games. I don't watch TV on it, uh, and I don't watch movies on it. But um, occasionally, uh, I, I do from time to time on Netflix or something like that, or my kids do. But um, So I don't really plan on making use of that SD card slot. But like I said, I thought that uh, the price on this was good and there was potential for using this four terabyte drive, but um, I'll talk about that in a moment here. But So let's take this, uh, the one we just took out of the box here. Oh, I guess, it, you know what? Um, I'm trying to think which I should show you. What I'll do is, let me, let me take them both apart. I want to show you what I did here with the plastic. Get these drives out of the way here so you can see everything. Um, taking this, these devices apart is actually amazingly easy. They're just using Phillips head screws. 
on these uh, on this particular unit, there's six all together, but you, on the back here, there's also, uh, I forgot to mention this, there's also a power slot on the back, uh, a barrel connector, five volts, two amps, just like the Collective Minds hub. And that's for providing extra power to the front USB ports. The Xbox One outputs 900 milliamps or, or 0.9 amps, so not quite an amp. So if you have certain devices that require more than an amp to charge, like a, a, an Apple iPad, for instance, needs two amps, um, whereas the iPhone requires one amp, just as a comparison, uh, you wouldn't be able to charge an iPad on this thing using the front ports. So theoretically, if you were to connect an AC adapter to the back of this device and provide the additional power, you would be able to charge something like an iPad. But one of the things I did discover in using this device, when you actually connect an external AC adapter to the back, you can't boot your Xbox One. I don't know whether that was an oversight or maybe that's a newer feature in the Xbox One. It appears that, so when you actually plug in an AC adapter to the back here, this, uh, this power LED on the front turns on. So you can actually get power when this isn't connected to anything from the back. However, when you connect it to the Xbox One and plug it in and you try to turn on the Xbox One, it won't turn on. I'm guessing there's some protection in the Xbox One when it sees a load on the USB port that isn't from itself. So it basically sees that there's uh, five volts um, additional or the voltage is up. My guess is when you use the AC adapter, you get a full five volts. The, uh, the Xbox One produces a little less than that, uh, about 4.8 volts. So the Xbox One's detecting that the, the higher voltage on that port and won't boot. You basically hit the power button and nothing happens. It might, I think for an instant the light comes on, but it immediately doesn't, uh, shuts right off again. Anyway, so we take those screws out there and this piece lifts off. As I said, there's a, there's a power cable here that goes to the back of the device. Um, but this whole thing comes off as a single unit. The sync button here has a spring. It's spring loaded. Unlike the Collective Minds hub, which, uh, isn't spring loaded. It's just a little button here with a with a nub there. Uh, this has a nice spring, so it kind of springs back. I do like that uh, a little better. And you can see there are uh, then the collective mind sub. And you can see there's two diffusers here for the SD power light uh, activity light and the power light. Um, now, I made a couple modifications to this device. And uh, I've recorded this video several times, and I've tried a number of things with some of the problems I had. And I'll, I'll get into that uh, in just a moment, but I just want to point that out because the things I'm going to show you right now are some of the modifications I made to the device. So if we look at this here, here, let me uh, let me take these couple screws out so you can see the unmodified one versus the modified one. Now, um, I had mentioned I had some issues, which is why I bought a second one of these. And uh, it came down to a few things that kind of compounded some issues. One was the USB 3.0 extension cable that came with the Collective Minds hub. Isn't a good cable. Uh, when I hook this up to the PC or my PC, it will uh, connect and then disconnect and then connect and then disconnect. I saw that on the Collective Minds hub. And then I saw that again on this device, and uh, I wasn't sure if it was the USB ports on my PC or something else. So I wound up picking up another cable from the store. This is a, a Pierstone USB 3.0 cable, and I have it connected to my PC right now, but I actually purchased about three of these, and these only cost me $5, but, um, but this is a six-foot cable. The, um, it's hard to tell from looking at it the quality of the cables. All I can say is this Pierstone cable works great and this one does not. Uh, thickness wise, the thickness is about the same on both these cables. So it's hard to tell from that. Uh, USB 3.0, it's important that your cable is properly shielded uh, because it does create some 2.4 gigahertz 
interference. So what that means is it can actually interfere with your Wi-Fi when it's not shielded correctly. So when this cable or USB device is near either a Wi-Fi card, like the one on your Xbox One, and uh, and your hard drive or this cable, it can create interference if the cable isn't properly shielded. If the cable is properly shielded, it's not an issue. So I just want to mention that because uh, initially I mentioned even in my Collective Minds video having some issue with the drive connecting and disconnecting from my PC. Anyways, it turns out to be the cable. So I had also mentioned that that was a nice addition that they gave an extension cable. It would have been nice if they gave you a, a good extension cable. Uh, I'm going to turn this around here so you can see the light. I got the light here on the, the other side. But So this is an unmodified hub versus the modified hub. So in order to fit that, uh, as I mentioned, to try the, the, the four terabyte drive, um, if you cut away the plastic here, so you can see again, this is flush. So if you try to connect the drive, which is also flush, it won't connect. So I used a, um, let's see if I have it here. I used a X-Acto knife to cut away and a razor blade to cut away the plastic here. I originally had filmed that. Uh, I've decided not to show it because as it turns out, um, one of the major problems and the reason this this whole video took me an extra week to produce and the reason that I bought a second one of these is that even though cutting this plastic away allows you to now connect up this four terabyte drive and fit it into this device easily. I'll show you here. You know, it fits in really nice, and you can put this little this little arm that holds the drive down, and then you can fit the door on here. Oop, I always do that. And you can fit the door on here, and then you would just put the screws in here to hold this down. But essentially, the uh, it fits fine because of the extra width on here. It fits. Uh, it holds a 15 millimeter drive perfectly fine. The problem is that even with that. The other thing worth mentioning here is I mentioned the, mentioned the voltage on the Xbox One. These uh, two terabyte drives that I've been using to upgrade the internal drive um, and also in the Collective Minds Hub and now in this particular device, the power requirements are exactly the same. They both are listed as 5 volts, point, uh, 0.85 amps, and the Xbox One puts out 0.9 amps. So it has enough power on the Xbox One to support or should support both these drives. However, in practice, that isn't the case. Now, again, I showed you what I cut out in plastic, so let me show you what I mean. Um, now, because of that USB cable from Collective Minds causing issues with the PC connectivity, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure that the problem was my PC, uh, the four terabyte drive, this device, or the cable. Um, so as a result of that, there you go. as a result of that, it took me a little while to figure out that this device does not like the four terabyte drive. Now, as I showed you in the packaging, it does mention using a two terabyte drive. Uh, I'm not sure why it cares. Maybe that maybe it is the hub that's built in here itself doesn't like certain drive sizes. And as I showed you, I had to cut plastic away just to get this thing to fit in here. And it does fit. But I'm going to show you really quick here. Yeah, push this cable down. There. Now. I want you to be able to hear this. So I have this Pearson's cable hooked up to my Windows machine here. And I want to bring this close to the camera because I want you to be able to hear it. Plug it in. Hear that? Hear that clicking? So with the, for whatever reason, with the Collective Minds cable, I was able to get the drive to connect to my Windows PC, um, but it would constantly disconnect and reconnect. With this Pearson's cable, basically when you hear a click like that in any kind of hard drive, it could be a bad drive, but it's more commonly 
just you don't have enough power provided to the drive itself. So we can see with a cable I know that's working that it doesn't provide enough power for my PC to actually power this drive, even though the power requirements are the same. Now I'm going to take, uh, I think it's this one here. Now we're going to take that two terabyte drive that I've been using in all my, uh, let me, uh, this arm's always swinging around a lot here. Let me tighten it up a little bit if that, yeah, it should be a little better. And then also, um, because I took this out, there's that cable that runs from the back to the front here also a pain which as I mentioned too which is also useless so um, because you can't plug this in and have it hooked up to your Xbox one at the same time but anyways when I put the two terabyte drive in here and I plug this in yep drive is all booted up ready to go no problems. If I look at my Windows machine here, particularly Disk Manager, it's all listed. So there you go. So that's the most obvious thing as to being a problem. And I only have one four terabyte drive. I ordered a couple more of these drives. Um, same model, they're made by uh, Seagate. Uh, but uh, I ordered a couple more of them to try them out to see if maybe just this particular drive has an issue, but I don't suspect that to be the case. It remains to be seen, I guess, but anyway, so there you go. So um, basically that's the most obvious thing about uh, the difference between a four terabyte and a two terabyte, even though the power requirements are the same. When I hook it up to my PC, the two terabyte works fine, the four terabyte does not. The other thing that I saw is and that again took me a while to troubleshoot was when I hook this four terabyte drive up in this unit to my Xbox One, it does recognize the drive and it works enough to install things, but it will also occasionally disconnect reconnect. So if you're loaded, uh, if you've loaded a game up and you're playing a game from the USB drive, the game will actually crash because this will disconnect. It'll say, um, uh, It'll list your the name, whatever you name the external drive is ready, and um, and you can use it. But then it'll disconnect and then reconnect and say the same thing over again. So anyway, so again, four terabyte drive, don't use them. Okay. Now the other thing we're going to look at here, going back to our other unit. So th again, this unit here. I, uh, I didn't cut the plastic. It doesn't seem like much of a, much of a reason to do it uh, since I'm not going to use that 4 terabyte drive. Now, um, on the inside here, there's six screws holding the motherboard, uh, the main board for the hub, to this plastic uh, piece here. So we're going to take those screws out here. Six, you'll see them all here. They use a, they use a slightly different screw type. They're shorter. They're also flat head as opposed to these rounded head screws so they're easy to tell apart now I'll show this in action but one of the things that kind of annoyed me about this device was the power light which is on the sync button this came with white LEDs which is actually a better idea than the green LED on the, the Collective Minds hub since the Xbox One uses white LEDs on the front. Um, this uses white here. Of course, that my Xbox Ones are all modified so they don't have white LEDs anymore. But um, So I did like that. However, you can see here now on the inside here, I'm going to separate the two. There's the power LED and here's the SD LED. The power LED is on all the time, so as soon as you connect this up to your Xbox One, the light shines, this incredibly bright white LED. And even with a hard drive attached, you and, and it's being accessed or not accessed, the power LED doesn't change at all. So the modification I made here, and I did this on both devices, is on the SATA connector, particularly the power connector, this is for the data, you can see that this is for data and then this is for power on the power connector there's 15 pins here pin 11 allows you to see activity so basically uh, pins 10 11 and 12 are ground 
but 11 specifically uh, provides um, activity information from the hard drive. And this is true on all SATA drives, particularly the three and a half inch. I've read or heard that on the two and a half inch drives, some of them won't show the hard drive activity on pin 11. But what you do is, this uh, for this power LED, is I've isolated it from ground. So I think you can make that out there. I used uh, my X-Acto knife to cut away the ground plane. This entire uh, board is grounded on both sides. So there's a bunch of traces that run back and forth, but anywhere between the traces is just a large ground plane. In fact, um, you know, just about any board you'll see has a color. It's usually painted in some way. And this is called a solder mask. This is so that um, even though this is the, there's a lot of metal on this board, the paint prevents solder from sticking to it. Um, and then what they do is they leave the areas you want to solder exposed so that the solder will stick, as you can see there. Uh, so what you can do is, to solder to it, you got to scrape away the mask. And then if you don't want to make connectivity, you scrape away enough so that the metal is, is scraped away as well. So what I've done here is the inner pin here, the ground pin on this LED, uh, when I say inner pin. So this is the top of the unit. So this is actually the top connector here, uh, looking at it this way, uh, which is happens to be the ground. Uh, these LEDs are actually labeled pretty nice under here. Uh, but what I've done is I isolated from ground. So I scraped off both sides. So you'll have to use a soldering iron to take this LED out and then just scrape away the, um, the ground pin, uh, the connectivity to ground on both sides of the board. And then once you've done that, you run a wire here from pin 11 to, I used a, a, a diode, a switching diode here. The idea being that um, I had read there's a potential for some back amperage on the SATA um, on the SATA drive. Oh, so when you remove ground from this LED, the, the LED won't work anymore without providing ground again. That's the whole point. Uh, so I do want to mention when you make a modification like this, if you want to use this just as a hub, this power light won't come on anymore. Uh, you have to have the drive connected because this, this connector here for pin 11 isn't connected to anything unless the hard drive itself is connected. Just forgot I'd point that out. So you're basically disabling this LED. Um, for when a drive isn't connected. Uh, but I didn't think that would be a big deal because this light being on all the time is really annoying. I'll get that in a moment, but... Um, so this this wound up being the only modification I made. Uh, originally, when I had this four terabyte drive connected, I had uh, a lot of issues with the Xbox One. Uh, as I mentioned, the drive would disappear in the middle of a game and then it would crash the game, uh, which makes this thing virtually useless. And... Um, but originally I wasn't sure if that was this device or it was a hard drive. So I wanted to see on a second device if the problem persisted in both, which it did. So the problem turned out to, of course, be the hard drive. As soon as I put a two terabyte drive in here, like this one here, um, the same drive that I use ha has an internal drive, the problems went away. So in these particular devices, I would suggest using a two terabyte drive, unless in the future, of course, they make a drive that, that performs better it's not to say you couldn't use some form of SSD drive with larger capacity, but they tend to be pretty expensive, as I mentioned in my Collective Minds uh, video. But anyways, here you go. I figured I'd show that. So there's just one wire running from pin 11 to the ground wire on this LED, and I'll show you what that looks like. That's the only mod I made. Um, as I said, I cut away the plastic on my other device here, but I don't think there's any real reason to do that. Um, in general, I've just given up on using these larger 15 millimeter drives on the Xbox One at all, either internally because they're limited to two terabytes internally or externally because the power requirements don't seem to be met on the USB ports to support this drive properly, at least not through this hub. I mean, the other thought is that um, if this drive was connected, well, I just showed you hooked up to the PC, it didn't provide enough power, but the thought was, you know, maybe if you didn't have all this other stuff, you know, you're powering to a uh, full hub, uh, potentially an SD card slot and two more USB interfaces that maybe the power would be fine on the Xbox One for this drive. But since that also negates the whole purpose of buying this thing, you know, you have all these extra ports, um, 
Although, you know, part of the reason I bought this was for cleanliness, but anyways, all right, so I'm going to put this all back together and show you it hooked up to the Xbox One so you can kind of see it in action and what my mod actually does. And then um, just to finish up here, though, uh, price-wise, this thing seems fine. It's easier to get a hold of. And if you're in the market for something like this, um, you want to basically have an external drive hooked up to your machine um, in such a way that you don't have a cable attached. One other thing I wanted to mention too before I finish up here is when I was having trouble with this drive my thought, I, I, I tried a few other things, I had some other um, USB drives connected so I had uh, here specifically I took apart uh, a Western Digital My Passport drive and a verbatim drive. These are both being um, USB 3.0 uh, external drives and I was lacking a cable with a connector like this. So I bought this at Home Depot. It's called uh, CE Tech. This cable turns out to be a pile of crap too. So um, the reason being when I connect this up to a laptop or even when I connect this up to the Xbox One, again, that whole connectivity thing where occasionally the connection drops. Now again, I, I think if anything, it, it may not be the, the ping connectivity, but it might be the shielding on this is such that it uh, interferes with itself or uh, potentially it could be a bad connector, I don't know, but um, what happened was when I had, when I was using this cable, uh, cable and was connecting this verbatim drive, which is a, uh, this drive here, it's a one terabyte drive, uh, during the middle of a Gears of War 4 session, the drive suddenly disconnected from the Xbox One. And that's the other thing I didn't cover here too, is that uh, I don't know whether it's the current dashboard has of the time that I'm making this video, the uh, current Xbox One heart, uh, dashboard, and maybe this has always been the case, if you have your Xbox One powered on and you have a USB drive connected and you suddenly disconnect it with it powered on, even when it's shutting down, you'll ruin the drive. You won't ruin the drive that you can't uh, reformat it and use it again, but any data you have on that drive and you have it formatted as an Xbox One drive, specifically the games that you've been, been installing on a USB drive, will be gone. And uh, if you reconnect the drive, reboot the Xbox One various ways, you know, holding down the power button for 10 seconds, um, you know, turning it off the normal way several times, that your USB drive won't get detected again. So if you've got a crappy cable that suddenly disconnects your USB hard drive in the middle of a session, uh, you'll have to reformat the drive again and start over again on the Xbox One. Um, so again, I wanted to point out don't buy, first of all, don't buy any USB cables from Home Depot. There's no point to it. Uh, but particularly this brand, CE Tech, they just make cheap cables. So it cost me $7, right? So it cost me more than um, these Pearson uh, USB 3.0 extension cables, which work wonderfully. This cost me 5 but, you know, the difference between online and retail, I guess. Um, and one other thing I found kind of interesting was most drives have you know, the usual large SATA connector here. This Western Digital My Passport Ultra Drive had this. I had never seen anything like this before. Let me show you. Uh, first of all, it's this is a two terabyte drive, but it's also a 15 millimeter drive. But if we look at the sides, you can see the height is about equal. Um, but if we look on the edge here, this has a built-in USB 3.0 port built in. So there's no SATA connector at all and there's an activity light right here. So this, this drive takes up basically the whole internal of this case. So they didn't have to use anything like this is, this is what's in the, uh, let me put it, ah. This is what's in the verbatim drive. It's a tiny little um, SATA connector here and then there's the USB port on the other side, which is also nice, but it makes it so that the verbatim drive is actually a little bit longer than the Western Digital Drive. Anyways, found that kind of interesting. But I also had trouble with this too. Um, basically a lot of slowdown on the Xbox One. Uh, occasionally this would disconnect. And I noticed that my, um, my controllers would start disconnecting. And I don't think it's the drive as much as, uh, as I just mentioned, it's uh, a crappy USB cable. So if you, uh, if you put any time into this, I mean, if you do your research on USB cables, I would say to stick with a brand name like a Belkin or 
just something that's a recognizable brand or something you've heard heard of before when when using a cable like this or just use the cables that um, Western Digital provided with the drive or Seagate or wherever you bought your drive from um, be wary of these cheap aftermarket cables um, so again um, I had some trouble with this drive connected but I think it was more this than the drive itself come to find out uh, with time okay something worth mentioning I don't think I mentioned this earlier in my video the current dashboard on the Xbox one there's two power modes there's instant on and then there's the energy saver setting what's interesting is I usually use energy saver because it fully shuts down the Xbox one it's still plugged in so there's still some power to the device and as you can see here the top system which is technically off the LED on the sync button here is still lit it's kind of dim here and that's because of my modification normally the the way this unit works is that light would be full blast super bright and you'll see it when I when I boot this up here and you start seeing the hard drive activity you'll see how bright the um, the LED gets and that's how it was originally in terms of um, how bright it was uh, all the time let me push this up a little bit. I wanted to also show you here the difference in the size of the the Collective Minds hub versus uh, which is on the bottom versus the this uh, the Ion Media Hub or the established brands Media Hub. Um, so you can see you know the width difference there. Uh, it's not so significant that it really makes all that big of a deal, but it does make the Xbox One all that much bigger. Anyways, so let's uh, let's boot up the uh, the unit here. So you can see the hard drive activity. I'm going to use a controller to do it here. The Collective Minds Hub, they're both plugged in right now, but you can see the Collective Minds Hub doesn't have any power LED. It just has a hard drive activity LED. Yeah, see, now you can see the brightness there of that LED when the hard drive is being accessed. That's basically the, what it was all the time, and you wouldn't see any hard drive activity at all. You can refer to my Collective Minds video where I show more detail about hooking the, the drive up and then booting it for the first time and formatting it, but I wanted to do a, uh, a shorter format video here and not retread the same stuff I've already done, but uh, I just wanted to show you kind of what this looks like. Let me go to the, let me boot up here. And there's the two terabyte external. Now what it just did there, making that noise and showing you the drive is ready to use, is um, what the four terabyte would do, four terabyte drive would do at random times. And it was basically rebooting the drive while it was connected to the system. Now, as I mentioned before, if, if I was to pull this drive off the system right now as it's powered on, like just rip this off, um, the drive would get corrupted to the point where I'd have to reformat and start over again, which is incredibly annoying. But, uh, and, and it seems like it shouldn't be happening, but that's what it does. However, when I had the four terabyte drive and it would just reset the drive, as I, I guess as opposed to disconnecting it, it would just reconnect over and over again. But in doing so, if I was loading a game or playing a game that was playing from the USB hard drive, uh, the game would crash, it would go back to the dashboard. So as you can see here, I got Gears of War 4. It's actually installed on the drive. So I'm just going to load it up just so you can see the hard drive activity light and then we'll end the video there. So we'll start up Gears of War 4. And I, I like uh, hard drive activity lights because I like to know that something's happening. You know, right now you see we have a blank screen here. But we know that it's loading because the hard drive shows shows us that it is. Uh, it's not a huge deal, right? Because the internal drive, you don't have any indication of when that's being read. So this isn't a 100% necessary thing. However, I do like to know when the external drive is being used versus the internal drive just because of... Uh, why do I like... I, I don't even know why I like to know. I guess because you can know. And because the Collective Minds Hub did it and this one didn't, I wanted them to function in a similar way. So 
There you go. Now, these are four is all loaded up. And we'll hit one more button here. Yeah, well, I guess you get the idea. But overall, uh, I, th I think for the price and for the look, I'm gonna show you here on the top of this device here. This one, I actually have an orange LED on the front and then I have a red LED fan because they don't make orange LED fans. Um, so I I'll, I'll, I'll might in the future make those LEDs red instead of white, but we'll see. Okay, well, that should do it. I'll see you in my next video.